All right, so as we left off kind of on the last video, I've got uh, my chassis in, and uh, I also, my chassis, everything's in the chassis, I should say. I've got my board populated, but I now need to try and get all the wires done. As you also may have recalled, my last wire was a bit short to reach over to this last tube, so I'll be doing that as well. But all in all, now I'm going to first go through and get wires cut for the length that I think I'm going to need. So I've got this in the chassis to try and look and see what's about the longest wire I will need, and we'll go from that uh, to figure out, and I'll just cut all of them about the same length. Except I might find a few that are extremely long. I don't want to cut all of them that long, so I'll, you know, but I'll kind of go from there as to what I think is the uh, best option. So, and uh, come back once I've got all those wires populated, and then I'll be ready to start soldering, and I'll show you soldering in. Okay, so today I am going to be hooking up things uh, in the chassis because I need to get that prep to drop in the now completed board. So to do that, I've got a couple of different areas I have to finish. One, I'm gonna have to bring in my power here on the back side, in through and connect it into the mains, which is this black, the pair of black wires. Uh, I then need to take the red and yellow and go to the rectification tube. The yellow is the five volt uh, that keeps the, that's the heater for the rectifier. And then the red will be what takes the high voltage. So the high voltage AC will go into the rectifier, and then I'll have a line that comes off of that into a, uh, into a cap, as well as going straight to the center tap of the output transformer, which is from these wires here. I believe that's the red one, if I remember right. So uh, effectively, that is kind of what I'm going to be doing today. I'll be hooking up the, uh, the choke as well to one side of the power, but then the other side will be going to the board once the board is in. I will also get the output transformer side here and send the output transformer wired into this guy and get it kind of underneath where that'll lay down. Uh, and then I'll probably, my next steps will be to wire up my uh, input jacks um, because those are uh, definitely gonna need to be wired. Once those are wired, I will then connect the inputs from those to the correct tubes. One of them goes to this one here, which is the uh, um, EF86, and the other one I believe goes to this one, which is the vibrato tremolo input and these are some of the tubes related to oscillation and uh, shifting and whatnot shift networks so okay so first order of business with this is always kind of fun and i always have a nightmarish time getting this in it's easy to put it in right now but as soon as i put a an actual cable around this piece it's quite tricky to get in but we're going to do what the best we can here so I always try and kind of get a sense of if I put that in there, where do I want it to go? Um, and I kind of want this to go all the way in here so that this, ca this cable and these cables will be kind of short and can be easily grounded nearby. And I'm not going to be fighting it, but uh, the trickiest, honestly, the trickiest part of this is getting this to kind of want to go in against such a thick piece of um, wire. And to do that, you pretty much need yourself a pair of pliers and squeeze pretty hard you're kind of crushing the insulation around it to get it to go in and it's always a nightmare I'm gonna come in front of the camera for a minute sorry so you'll watch me fumble with this for all maybe I'll edit most of this out though because it is a royal pain in the butt And people might, out there might have some tips on this. I would really appreciate them because I always hate this part. I can never quite get it right. And I think that was it right there. teeny bit still off on one side. I don't know if you can see that, but just a little teeny lip still hanging up. I don't want to go in. There we go. Okay. So now I'll rotate this back around. And we have this. So um, the way we want to wire this is I'm going to ground this one down to one of the lugs down here that you probably can't, I don't know if you can see that from that side very well, but I'm going to ground it down to one of these lugs that hook into the chassis bracket mount. I'm going to get a little piece to hook into that. And you want to kind of double it up. You want to get the little uh, thing that you're putting onto it and crimp it 
so it physically has a hard solid contact and then I also kind of flow that with solder as well just to double check it but the physical crimping is probably the most important part for your ground so then my common white wire will just wire into one of these the other one will go through the switch and the fuse um, as well so um, so I'll basically bring the the black line from this guy into the switch and then over to the although I've made myself a teeny bit short there of course hmm. yeah, that'll be fun um, so I might need to try and see if I can um, Oh, you know what? Actually, what might work best is that I might be able to actually get it to reach to the fuse. And then from the fuse to the switch. It doesn't matter which order those go in, I don't believe. Because the fuse basically just needs to be in line so that if, if a surge hits, like when you power, turn the power on, it, it can... And there'll be no current flowing through that until we get it through. But I'll see. It's kind of weird that that's... No, that comes just it comes out a little bit farther. Um, so, anyway... Uh, I might have to pull this guy back out again now because I need it to go just a teeny bit further to get to that power switch. Um, so I'll give that another try. can just strip that out. All right, so like I said, the first part that you do is that you strip back a little bit. Get my wire strippers here. Where did I hide them? Right there. So we can strip all of them back to give ourselves the room we need. So the black wire, I will pre-tin, and then I can, now that I know that I have the length, I'll quickly remove the, um, you know, the screw piece off of this, so it's a little easier for me to connect it. And what I'll do is, you know, connect this guy into this side, solder it in, and then I'll connect a short wire to jump her over between here and there, etc. Um, before connecting it into the other one. Meanwhile. The other part I'm going to do though is I'm going to take the other end of this, and this doesn't need to be very long, but I will give it a little room. I'm going to snip it probably about right here, <sighs> because I'm going to, obviously as I said, hook the white wire up to one of these as well, and uh, the white wire will, um, I want to get a little bit of shrink wrap, or shrink tubing, that's going to be the width of this wire. And this might be a little too thin, we'll see here. I'm just testing to see because... No, no, that looks like that's the right size. Because what I'll do is I will... Um, I'm going to do kind of like a... Similar to a lineman splice, I guess. I'm not great at doing it perfectly, but there's a, a kind of cut you can do. Uh, that's not cutting. I just stretch the crap out of it instead. Um... Where you wrap the center section a tad on the loose side, uh, uh, wide I should say, but then the edges you wrap it tightly around. So while I've got it right here, I will do that and shrink wrap it. But we have to solder it too, so I got to turn on my soldering. So we'll come back to that in a minute. But I'm going to show what I might try and do here is get a very close up on what I'm doing with the wire here. So I'm going to pause the recording for a minute. All right, so first order of business is going to be to pre-tin the wires. So I will, I don't have my fan on. I need to really probably get it closer, but I'm just trying to quickly tin the wires here. Tinning wires is just like tinning anything. You want to um, get the tip wet so that it can transfer heat well, but you do not want to...
Oh, you know, I, I just did that backwards. I think normally what I will do is I will wrap them and then tin them. I just tinned them first, so that means wrapping them is going to be quite hard. So i got to let them cool off a little bit. I'm going to burn my hand. So what I'll do while I'm letting that cool off is I'm going to find my little end piece and crimp that on for that ground. I've got the bag somewhere over here with all those guys. Here it is. Okay, and I've got a few extra Z's as well if I need them. But So what I do is get the ground. And as you can see, there's a... As you can see, we've got the... I'm putting this little tip on. And then what I do is I bend that back over. I'm not sure how clear that is, but hopefully you can see that. And then I crimp it to try and make sure that it's also just seated permanently in a way that won't come undone. And then I solder it. So you kind of get a combination of physical connection and soldered connection for your grounds. So as you can see now, I've got a nice soldered joint there that will hold well when I bolt it down to there. And so what I'm going to do now is quickly get my screwdriver, undo this, and hook. I'll just hook into this guy right here. Actually, maybe this one is going to be kind of hard to get to the... I dropped my lock washer. Well, I'll hunt for that in a moment. But I'll probably invert this so that I can easily get the grounding wire on there. And for now, I will just start the nut. Alright. So, I quickly soldered those. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'll try and rotate it. You can see I've got one wire coming in this side. One wire coming on the opposite side. I can kind of show it from this angle as well. One there, and one there. And this will go down here now. And I will put the thread uh, connector back on that. It wasn't too exciting soldering it. I forgot to start the cameras, but I don't think you've missed a whole lot. It's just soldering. And you've seen me doing a lot of that so far, so. wrench somewhere that I can possibly use. Tighten this guy now. Alright, that's good and tight. Now, um, the next thing I did was I come off of that into the input of this fuse and then from the output of the fuse down to the transformer. The other side of the transformer comes up to white and of course that goes to power. So, we now have our mains power connected in. It's kind of tucked over in this corner where it doesn't matter as much. And as I connect other grounds, I will be connecting them into the same grounding point here that you can maybe see. I don't know if the yellow wire may be blocking it from that view, but uh, let's try and see if I can make that more visible. But down here, you can see the green wire coming down to about where my finger's touching, hopefully. Um, so the next thing I'll be hooking up is going to be the rectifier. Both of these leads to the rectifier. And once I've hooked that in, then I'm going to need to hook in the um, the half of this guy and the center tap, I believe, I'll double check, I believe the center tap, one half of this, uh, um, uh, the center tap, sorry, I think this goes to ground, I think about it. I'm double, I'm almost positive, the center tap of the power transformer goes to ground, so I'll hook that in with that. The center tap of the output transformer will come over and connect directly into where the power and the first 
um, capacitor goes, and then from there that goes over to the board. But uh, I'm going to double check all that really quickly, and then start getting ready to prep that up, and, and you can watch me connecting those up.